In today's video, we'll address a common problem that I often see in the comment sections of my YouTube videos, also in various programming forums and communities. So the issue is that when people use libraries like PyInstaller, CXFreeze, or Py2EXE, they often experience this problem when distributing it to their users. It gets flagged as a virus or malware, or it gets deleted instantly. This happens a lot on Windows. You just download or send it to them. No matter how you do it, by sending it through a USB or downloading it, it can get, it can get insta deleted or insta flagged or instantly quarantined. This is very common on Windows, especially. And even in the event that it doesn't end up flagging your software, what it does, the firewall, the Windows firewall, many of you may not know this, but it actually severely slows down the load time of your application. There are various scans and security checks and stuff that Windows applies that severely slow down your application. So what you can do is like turn off your firewall, turn off the real time production, then run your EXE, and you'll notice the speed difference. So how do we get around this issue? Well, the first thing you need to do is understand why this is happening. It's happening because you are essentially a stranger to the antivirus or the firewall that is flagging your application. Your application is unsigned. It doesn't have a security certificate. It's from an unknown publisher. And it also likely matches the signatures of other similar attacks or malware because PyInstaller is a very popular library and there's a good chance that it's been used to spread malware and Trojans, etc., ransomware. So there's a good chance that your application resembles slightly, even slightly, one of those malwares. So that could be the issue. Now, as you can imagine, this isn't, this isn't gonna be very easy. I have, however, gone through a lot of the internet. I've gone through a lot of different discussions, possible solutions, articles, etc., and tried out a few things myself in the past. So I'm gonna be combining all of that knowledge into this article that I've created. And I'll include a link to it in the description below so you guys can check it out as well. It's basically everything but in text form. So the first thing we want to do is upload our exe over here into this website called Virus Total. So what you can do is upload your exe here, like this is one that I have. Then you can check to see how many antiviruses have flagged your exe as malicious. And over here we can see 13 out of 66. So what that means is that 13 antiviruses found our exe malicious. And there are even some popular ones here like Bitdefender and McAfee that have detected it as malicious. And this doesn't even include the Windows Firewall, which is almost guaranteed to block your application. So you can kind of use this as a point of reference to see how well you're doing on getting your exe uh, detected as non-malicious. Okay, so this is a useful website. Now, let's move on to the solutions. The first solution is to avoid the one file mode in PyInstaller. This had worked for many people because one file in PyInstaller is actually kind of weird. It's kind of like a hacky solution that PyInstaller does. It bundles everything into um, this, well, it's kind of like a pseudo, pseudo folder. You think that it's just a single exe, the one file mode, but it's actually more like something, um, you run the exe, then it unpacks it in a virtual folder uh, I don't remember the exact details, but it's something like that. So that's also why it takes a bit longer to uh, the startup time for one file mode is actually longer because it does this extra step instead of, you know, using the one directory mode. So the one file mode is actually this hacky solution can actually cause Windows or antiviruses to flag this as suspicious behavior because it's not normal behavior. So I don't recommend you do this. All right. So this might solve your problem. Let's move on to number two. Now this one's a bit complicated and I won't discuss this really. Uh, I don't really recommend this technique either. I mean, you can, if you're really, really focused on to, um, you know, using Pi Installer for some reason, then you can go ahead and try this. This is something I've seen other people recommend. Basically, Pi Installer comes with several compiled binaries for different operating systems. So what you can do is just delete all of that uh, by uninstalling PyInstaller and then rebuilding PyInstaller using your target system, building the binaries on your system. So this can basically, this has worked for many people. 
and there have been articles on it as well so this will potentially work for you okay there's a good chance but i don't really recommend this approach there's another approach that i actually recommend so we'll get to that in a minute now here's the third solution code signing certificate this is actually the officially recommended approach that you would tell anyone to do who's making a proper commercial application um, a mass commercial application um, for many users or this is what an organization would do okay so what exactly is this basically it's getting a third party a code signing certificate provider to vouch for your application basically using the concept of digital certificates if you're familiar with cybersecurity, so you can you can look up the details um, later if you want to if you're interested in this approach but the reason why 99% of you will never use this approach is because it is expensive. It's it's going to cost you like 300 to 400 dollars. Let me just show you some of this. This is what Microsoft recommends. So these are some of the various code signing certificate organizations, and you can see this is what it's going to cost you, and that's just for a single year. Okay, so this is something. Um, it's not very hard to set up. This is all the steps that there are, but this is expensive. And you're definitely not gonna be doing this if you're a hobbyist or just making a free software, okay? So this is not gonna be an option for most of you. I know that. So let's move on to the next one. Now, this is the approach I actually recommend, but I'll, I'll come back to this in a bit, okay? Let's discuss the other techniques first. So here we have Inno Setup. Inno Setup is a way we can distribute our Python application. It's used to create an installer, and this is going to be useful because you can take your PyInstaller EXE, then bundle it using Inno Setup. Inno Setup takes an EXE, and then it converts that into its own EXE, kind of kind of wraps around that EXE. And because Inno Setup is a very trustworthy software, um, there's a better chance of you actually getting your EXE to run. Okay, because in Windows you can get like insta deleted when you just transfer or download your software, your exe, your PyInstaller exe. But if you do it do it with Inno Setup, it might at least there's a good chance at least I think that it'll pass the initial uh, scan. Okay, like Windows will very likely let the exe into the system. Now whether it actually allows it to run and doesn't flag it after you install it using Inno Setup. That's 50-50 if you ask me, but this is very, very well worth a shot because it's pretty simple. Just need to go install Inno Setup and just go to the website. Very straightforward. Okay, and just download it from there. Then follow the script wizard. And then there's an option to include your exe. Just include that, browse and find your exe, and then click compile. Then it'll generate an exe which you can distribute to your user and when he installs it then your PyInstaller EXE will appear in the folder that you specified for the installation or the folder that the user specified for the installation. If you guys want to see a very detailed guide I have a link right here. Whoops. Um, but yeah that that article is like it has screenshots and everything so you can check that out. Now this is another thing that you can do that I've seen people actually do and it has worked um, so what you can do is like if there's a particular antivirus that's bothering you, you can go to the antivirus um, and many of them have like a report, a false positive feature. So you can actually submit your EXE, your application and tell them that there's nothing wrong with this. It's a false positive. Please uh, update your definitions. And there's a good chance that they will. It might take some time. It might take some time for them to release their updates, etc. But this is something that some of you may consider. But let's get to the one that I actually recommend, that most of us as hobbyists or casual programmers um, are going to be using. So this is Nutica. Nutica is a PyInstaller alternative. It's just a different way of generating EXEs, a drastically different way. It generates, uh, what it does is converts your Python code to C first, C source code, then generates an EXE from that in the same way that C and C++ compile themselves to EXEs. So the way this is done is drastically different and it's done in a way that 
is very likely not to raise any flags. And this is likely the reason it's also much faster than PyInstaller. I've used Nutica to, I've used it actually several times. I actually recommend the software over PyInstaller. I've used it several times. It's, it's considerably faster. It loads in like less than half the time uh, or sometimes even three times as fast than PyInstaller. The only disadvantage, well, two disadvantages, is one, the exe size is gonna be quite big, uh, especially if you have libraries installed. If you don't have libraries installed, it'll be pretty small. But if you do have libraries installed, it's gonna be twice or thrice as big as PyInstaller applications, okay? Second disadvantage, it takes several hours if you have many libraries, or maybe several hours is an exaggeration. Real realistically, for the average application, it'll take about 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, depending on your computer as well, how fast it is. So yeah, that is what I recommend. Nutica EXEs generated using it will be much, much safer and very, un very unlikely to raise any flags. So these are the six solutions that I recommend. And good luck, honestly. I would like you guys to leave some feedback in the comment section below, which techniques worked for you, which ones didn't. Uh, and if you could list down some information about your systems, about your application as well, that would be great. If you have any solutions of your own you want to share, then definitely do let us know and maybe we can add them to this website. All right.